For the better part of a decade, the gaming industry has built its foundation on top of a beautiful lie that E3 was ever good. You know, shit that only happens in video games, right? So after a long year off, set for a big return, it's gotta be a banger, right? Not gonna lie, man. It's pretty bad. This year, E3 kicked off with Jeff Keighley's latest desperate grasp at relevancy. Where he sold off his own Dark Souls to show off the first look at Elden Ring. I haven't played too much of the other From Software games because I'm a little baby bitch, but I'll have to grab this one to find all the little love notes that George R. R. Martin has scattered around for me. I recently played my first Souls game in Demon Souls and was surprised at just how much I loved it. But the world they are showcasing in Elden Ring really is something special. It's so atmospheric and beautifully varied. It feels so different from most of these Souls games that you see. Plus, I love these little pop boys. Look at them! <laughs> Ubisoft's presentation included announcing Rainbow Six a few times, as well as Riders Republic. I don't understand why this game looks like it was made by a youth pastor and a bunch of people that have never talked to a single kid before. Yeah, tonally this game looks like dog shit, but if they rip off enough stuff from Tony Hawk and evolve it, like the team-based tag mode, uh, it might actually be a fun game. I like it, I like it. Next we got Ubisoft's Guardians of the Galaxy. And look, I'm not gonna like beat a dead horse talking about how much we all hate these little freaks, but I'll see if I can play this game just for her. Well, at least with its major competitor to leaving a big Sony-shaped hole, Microsoft was poised to dominate. Have you seen Cuphead? Yeah, uh, I, I would think it would be more than reasonable <laughs> for a imminent release date announcement. Yeah. I never liked Gears of War. I think I you are going to see it. some Gears of War. <laughs> are we going to see Fable? I think we'll see something. I'm interested if we hear mm -hmm. anything from Moon Studio, who's the studio behind the Ori games. I wouldn't be crazy surprised if we saw a Game Pass on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, there was none of that. I was honestly really surprised to see how much love the Microsoft presentation actually got. But once I stopped thinking about all the things I didn't get and tried to look at it more objectively, I think I get it. In the Phil Spencer era, Microsoft presentations have been centered around the three V's. Volume, variety, and velocity. Things move so quickly that you barely have any time to process the things that you don't care about. Not into contraband? Great. It's done. Far Cry 6, not your thing? Cool. Jack Sparrow's here now. It honestly represents Microsoft's overall strategy as a company pretty well. They want you to buy Game Pass and are going to keep throwing things at the wall until something sticks for you. For me, and many others, that thing happened to be Halo which by the way, was the only thing I predicted correctly. Yeah, I think it'll be enough. Yeah. And I think it's gonna be, have to be a holiday release. So there it is, in all its good enough glory. As much as I'm disappointed to see Halo playing it safe and not pushing the envelope anymore, in truth, I don't really need that. Halo is fucking fun. And if that's all I get out of this entry, that's fine. I don't need hardware max visuals. I don't need a battle royale mode. I need a weapon. Or at least one of these. Okay, so not a ton from Xbox, but next we have Square. They have a big history with Sony who's absent again this year, so maybe we can expect something big. I love to see what they're doing with new IPs like Forspoken. They're doing a bunch of stuff for the Dragon Quest 35th anniversary, like we're getting a remake of 3 in the Octopath engine, and we're also getting the new entry 12, which is supposed to be like a darker, more mature entry in the series. A Dragon Quest to Dragon Quest Z sort of thing. <laughs> But what I'm really here for is Final Fantasy. As conflicted as I am on the remake of 7 and how it's handling its story, and most importantly its portrayal of its characters, I still can't help it. I can't. I need it. I need it all. Whether that's the trashy remake of a remake mobile game, a battle royale prequel, I can't get enough 7. And that's not everything from Final Fantasy. We just got 16 announced and we're promised new news. With Dragon Quest getting a remake in the Octopath Engine, maybe we can get these older RPGs in the Final Fantasy series as well. Like, I would love 6 to get remade. And we can't not bring up the massive leaks of a Souls-like game in the Final Fantasy universe. It's all supposed to be about the origins taking place in the first Final Fantasy. And like, look at this art. 
It's this high fantasy, oversaturated, colorful mess of a world with like beautiful character design. And I just can't wait to see how they tackle this in a modern day console. They really have no reason why they shouldn't win. Gardeners of the Galaxy? Not interested. Okay, so we get two Guardians games this E3, and that's fine, but it's hard for me to get excited about these comic book games when they don't look like this, and then they end up looking like this. I can't get behind this Star-Lord with that haircut. And Jesus, did they ever talk way too long about this game. It was like 15 minutes, half the presentation of just Guardians. Not interested. <laughs> What's this stuff about? Looks like chaos has been waiting for us. Not interested. Okay, that's fine. We got Capcom next. We just need like one thing. If we get a beautiful Joe remake, a new Darkstalkers, or bring out the big guns and have Okumi announce Okami 2. It's spooky. Nintendo has gotta open big. The Patchwork Bear Outfit, exclusive to the Nintendo Switch version, will be available for free for two weeks after launch. And then you gotta pony up. <laughs> okay, but no matter how bad it is, you can still do some digging and find some gold. Like, oh my god, did this game ever come from my throat? You get to play as this awesome punk, pink-haired anime girl who's in a band and does crime. The entire aesthetic, message, design, and sound hits me with such pinpoint sniper accuracy, I have to assume another me is behind this game. Seriously, the last time something this catered specifically to me came out was 2019's River City Girls, and they're coming back with the sequel to that and the original 1994 game that we never got over here. Like, I don't even care that they hit me with just the JPEG for this. And they finally gave a little bird a sword! And a bard! Fatal Frame, Maiden of Black Water, creeps onto Nintendo Switch this year. Your only defense is a camera that can repel and cast them out. New costumes and photo modes are included in this version. Uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. Ganon's dead, dude. Are we getting more Zelda? Who the fuck is that? Shirtless Sephiroth? Is this Demon Souls? Is this Tekken, man? No, it's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Okay, my obsession with Smash is unhealthy. I love everything about this franchise so much. I'm digging on the boards to find everything I can on this, fake leaks. I'm doing all that kind of discussion. So anytime we get anything new for Smash, I'm absolutely ecstatic. And I'm not the biggest fan of Tekken, but I absolutely love seeing these big fighting game icons make it in. So we got like Ryu, Ken, Terry, and now Kazuya. We got one spot left and I can't wait to see who it is. Hey, here's a monkey ball. Oh, hell yeah, I'm really excited about this. Ooh. Cool. Yes, yeah. <laughs> holy shit. Oh. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Oh, Warrior Waiter. This was like leaked for a long yeah. time. I'm, this you is exciting. You gave us a lot of data about how much you'd pay for this game. <laughs> what, what? Holy shit, holy shit. Oh. It's back. Oh my god, oh my god. Is this a remake or oh it's a, a remake? Holy fuck. Like, oh that's so pretty. Wow, okay, this is really fun. See, this is all we want, Nintendo, is just old shit. I like that. Whoa. Whoa, that looks pretty, dude. I'm still absolutely bewildered by the development time on this sequel and could drone on and on about my conspiracy theories for this game and what it means for the Switch Pro, but the bottom line is, is that this game looks absolutely gorgeous. Nintendo knows how to get shit running on their hardware better than anyone else. I adore the first game. Everyone does. And I can't wait till it comes out, long after I'm dead. The first Breath of the Wild was a magical experience in gaming. It's one that I wish I could play over again for the first time. And in one minute, they show just how much bigger that they can make this world. I can't wait to dig in and find every single secret that's already hiding in there. And I love the idea of being able to play around with time in this game. And I can't get over how beautiful these clouds are. They're like candy. 
My favorite part of Wind Waker was discovering these small uncharted islands with their own unique little mysteries on them. This is what Skyward Sword should have been. Was E3 perfect? No. Was it awful? No. But after the year that we've all had, all it needed to be was here. And there's like a whole bunch more that we didn't even get to talk about. Okay, so like E3 is not all that bad, but next we have Bandai, and there's so much here that I'm excited from them. Like we could get more info on Tails, more of a deep dive into Elden Ring, and they've been taunting and teasing me with Digimon Survive for like over two years now. It was supposed to be out like a year ago, and they keep delaying it and delaying it, so I just expect to see something here from it. And then we also have all these rumors about a My Hero fighting game done by the same people who did Dragon Ball Fighters. And that has me going crazy. So October, spooky season. Uh, that's a lot of competition for games. And uh... before we dive in, wait, what? That's not it, right? <laughs>